Let us all pray silently, meditating on God's words. Almighty Father, to us, you want to give a faith that you'll give us the best things among people that will be the most precious people that our eternity, that our name uh, would be left as a legacy for our descendants as well. Help us to help, help us to be servants of power that help save this country and the world. Help us first be witnesses that it will work out well for us. Help us to find resolution to our problems, starting from me, that my family will be a model family, that will be witnesses for the whole world. Help us to be that blessed family. I have faith that this hour will receive all the promise of your blessings in the name of Jesus and thankfulness and blessings I pray. Amen. Each of you, you want your wishes. I hope that your wishes are fulfilled. Let's repeat after me. Sheep, lamb. In the small sanctuary, you can hear well, right? So today, God's words, you and I, unfortunately, the people who are facing problems, when you have, you pray and you have resolution to a problem, then you have more and more problems of coming upon you. Why? Exodus 14, 13, 14. Exodus 14, 13, 14. Well, God wants through each of you to be that to help to let the whole world know that God is alive. To help the whole world become people who are good people that God wants us to be used as servants of the Lord, of the uh, showing the power of the Lord. Deuteronomy 5.15, God's command is for us to remember these events of the Exodus to each of you. God wants us to be a witness that God is alive, a living God. So hundreds, there's, there's so many people. We can't, some people say there's tens of millions or millions. They might get a PhD, but we can't really say that person's right or this person's right. It's not about the numbers. The, the, it's like the people of a whole nation. So it's so many people. So not 10 million earlier, but it says 100,000 or a million or whatever. But if we disobey the word of God, then we'll all die. So we, then where must we, we be a part of? We have to be, obey and go into the land of Canaan and be a righteous person that can rule over that land. Each of you, the fact that you have a problem, you, it, it just leave you. You don't become an owner, always being a servant of the worldly things. You and your descendants ruining your life. This kind of tr receive training in obedience that you can live life in, in the land of Canaan. When you go in there, there, there are few that will go in there. That, that's the few the numbers that are going to heaven. You and I, we have to be part of that few numbers. That's why he gave, gives us the events of Exodus. There's problems. You have a problem that's upon you. That's the reason. Something with your health, your business, whatever it is. Those who are weak with money, they have problems with money. That's how you can be an owner that can rule over things of money. In a word, God wants, He gave us a problem so that we can change our faith in a word. You say, Amen. So how can we win over this? God, to me, you know, I don't, I don't do sports that, you know, I just go and watch. And once in a while, there's not enough uh, athletes that I would go substitute. But and then I end up winning a trophy and placed in. Uh, I, so I was lucky by worldly standards. I only did that. There's nothing, no sports or nothing that I really do uh, that I'm expert at that I'm really good. I'm a person that can be included or excluded, but yet God had a place for me to to be useful. Each of you right now, those who are weak with their flesh that God wants you have a problem with your, your health because God wants to make you healthy what happens when you have uh, immunity shots even why pay money to get shots with, that weaken you God you and me he wants to strengthen our weak areas 
at events of Exodus, God wants us to be witnesses of being ruling over things. Let's receive blessings today, this early morning, to, to help save the world. There will be servants of power to help save the world, the problems that you have. It's not just you. Let's let it work out for you and then help others for to help work out for others. And giving glory to God, helping others to be saved. God will change us to that kind of servant of power. So what is it that you're doing? Are you selling socks on the street? But you can do really well even with that. You know, I see people selling socks on the street. They have a newspaper and then they put socks there and they're, they're hiding some, somewhere else. Uh, it's far away. No customer will go see them. I ask them, are you the owner? Yes, come here. And see what I'm doing. Here, here, socks, cheap. That's that's how people will come. If you just leave there and go somewhere else across the street and or you know across the way, across the path. No. You have they have to you know they have to make some money, but then they have pride, so then they try to hide from being a seller of socks on the street. So when I after I do that, from that that then that person is doing it. Uh, they they pay more attention, and then customers, you know, come gather. You can't be far away from where the your merchandise is that you're trying to be a street vendor for. Each of you, God, God wants us to learn something from there. That's why He puts us in that situation. Even if you're a president here who didn't wear socks, yeah, everybody, we all wear socks. Then. If I'm a person that sells that socks, then that, that's great, that's wonderful. So, be confident, be bold. In a word, the events of Exodus, God he gave us those events so we can be bold. Not that it won't work, we're in the middle of learning it. What? You're learning how for things to work out. Let's read with one voice, Exodus 14, 13, 14. But Moses said to the people, Do not fear, stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see them again forever. The Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. Amen. Amen. While you keep silent or you keep still. That's what the Korean version says. So, silent and still comparable. What is it that you have a problem that's upon you? God is doing that so that we can be saved. Sa being saved is going to heaven. So the fact that you have a problem upon you, not that He will give you uh, through that, God, that you can go to heaven. When you're able to go to heaven, that's when you can rule over things of the world. God will give you blessings on top of that. So then, then there's nothing you have to do, however, with your problems. Just all you have to do is uh, be still and, and just watch. So Jesus, believing Jesus is this. You have a problem, there's nothing you have to do. The good things of this world, we think we're doing good things, but in God's eyes, there's so many times where it's wrong, where we're wrong. After early morning service, to, you know, I get beat, I get rebuked by my, my, my wife, and then I repented, and, and that's how I came out here. Pastor, God does His works, so God's doing His miracles. So are you getting all floaty? Pastor's wife says, rebukes me. That means I'm not re uh, repenting enough. When you hear that kind of rebuke, I'm very thankful. So therefore, so, so I ate a little bit of lunch and I stopped. So there's a delicious bread, but I couldn't eat it. Why? While I'm repenting, that's when I can be revived. Each of you then, from a Korean standpoint, can women say, shout out? No, I'm sharing God's, uh, God's preach, and there was so much applause. Why? How do you? Why are you rebuking me? That's wrong. If I think that way, no. She rebukes me and say, Amen. You know, while I was eating, that I would kneel and say, Amen. I would put down my my utensils, and I would listen to a rebuke and repent again. And that's what I did before I came out here. If perhaps that I would be floaty, why? Because if I would be floaty, that I would go back and get regrounded and humbled. 
That, that's God's promise. It's incredible promises today. You just have to just sit, uh, be still and watch. There's nothing we need to do. God will fight for us and we'll win. So each of you right now, you have sickness, you don't have money, you're facing difficulty, you have a problem. God, He will do it all for you. So when does He do it for us? When we're doing what? Here today, verse 13, 14, we read that. So if we read verse 12 above that, the many people, they grumble. The verse Corinthians 10, 10, those who grumble, God, He will make them fall into ruins. He'll destroy them. He destroy them. So, these many numbers, they knew how to grumble. Like Moses, they weren't. He wasn't still and watching. But there's, they weren't doing that. But Moses, he, he says to st be still and watch. In verse thirteen and fourteen, after that, verse fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, we we'll read that God tells us incredible things. He says incredible things. He says Moses, as I ordered you, as I commanded you. So have you. Be still and watch, relying only on God. When, to those people who are so old as that, God makes them hear the voice of God. Those who grumble and complain, they won't hear that. So the fact that you have a problem, you hear God's voice. Do you say Amen? So it, it will be, let us all be servants of power, that we can listen. So some grandfather, so he, they're in and out. Uh, and uh, I would uh, pat their, their behind and, uh, and then God uses them that way. And then other people, it says, come all the way from the back to the front. At moment by moment, as God, I hear the voice of God. But what God does is incredible. I obey that. So it doesn't end there. So it's, when I am healed, as I'm healed, we become a person that is of strength and power and rule the things of the world and help save the world. We, God will make us incredible people. So you and I, that's to do that, God has called us here, I believe in that. Do you let us all receive this power and strength, that we receive power and strength from the Lord. This is so surprising and incredible in the small sanctuary that you would all receive this as well. This is an incredible promise. Verse 13, 14, let's read that one more time. But Moses said to the people, Do not fear, stand by, and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see them again forever. The Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. Amen. While you keep still. Amen. Now, here, in verse 13, the problem, the problem, He will solve that problem through a problem. You just be still and watch. No, nope. you just have to be still and watch. And then you will give us only good things that will strengthen us. Just watch. That's God's promise to us. That today, let it be a time, blessed time, we'll receive that blessings. You, whenever a problem faces you, it comes upon you, you think, why do I have this problem? You think of different verses. The meaning of that, the sound of that, where grumbling complaint uh, are you out of thanksgiving or out of grumbling complaint, people know this. That's grumbling. So here today, the events of Exodus, a whole country, it will determine whether they're living or dying. They're in the sandwich. That's the current reality. In the behind them, there's the uh, the soldiers of Egyptians with the with the chariots and all that. But in front, there's the the Red Sea that they're going to drown in. That's so, you know, people normally they would say that they're they're in desperate desperation situation, but this is about the Chinese characters. We can I'm bound to die. The situation that I'm in. So in that situation, then in this world. They don't know God. So here today, when you have a problem, every time you have a problem upon you, these people, will they live or die, this problem, this problem, all of the people, oh, it's not that all the people should die. These days you're weak, your body's weak. So eat good water from uh, seafood, and then after that be healthy. 
let's give praise to God and the people, armies of Egypt as they pass. As you're passing the Red Sea, that you can collect all the seafood. That they would, I will, I will make them a wicked heart, have a wicked heart, hardened heart that will follow you. And after that, with water, he's gonna, you're not gonna be destroyed, but he'll destroy them. When you keep with the good things that's not, and be unstained by the worldly things, then the others, God will, before you and I, it's our problem that we have. So the fact that we have a problem, then you just, just be still. And then, that's how you say, Amen, God wants us to do that. But when we have a problem, we get all shaken up. The people of Israel, they're all shaken up. They're all they're here. Exodus, the problem of Exodus is like whole, whole uh, people, are they going to die or their family's going to die? Moses, who heard the voice of God, just don't think of him as Moses, but as me. We have to be. We have to, what, if it's me, like Moses, he sees the family and the wives, said so we shouldn't commit suicide, but let's just be still and watch. We have to be a Moses that where that comes forth, if wife does that, then that's the events of Exodus. Let's just watch, stand, be still and watch, then their family will, be, will survive and be revived. But we think, my fate, my luck, the people. You know, I, I should have married the other person that I met earlier. You know, people think that. You know, why is my fate like this? Why is my lot in life like this? So, you know, if I don't leave now, and leave, I would be a fool. And yet, people then leave. Where are they going to go? You know, they go here and there with their luggage. They, they, you know, they can go into their own bedroom, but they're, they don't know where to go. And then the family's, you know, broken and all these issues, because the people, they do that because they haven't found their right path. I can, so even the events of the Red Sea, we have to be able to rule over it. We just have to watch it, be still and watch it. And it will all turn into a blessing. You have to repent, in other words. So this, in front of each of you, why is it upon you again and again? So that's how you can learn to do this and that, learn different things from all these problems. The pastor in front of you, I kind of learned a lot. I didn't know about, uh, I didn't know about uh, putting up wallpaper. So I, went, I don't even know how to clean a room with wallpaper after they put the, uh, the paper, they, that's sticky, they was applied and I tried to take off wallpaper. I couldn't do it. I spent so much time, so I, this isn't the rate. They said, you know, wet it and then put, and then you can they tear it all up after you wait for a while. So, um, excuse me. I, I'm talking about plucking the chicken's feather, you have to. It doesn't come out. You have to wet it. I think that's what it's referred to. When we make a, a mistake, it's like that. It, and then it ran away. We were. It's like that. Before God, we have. There's nothing we have to do. We don't have to put hot water and try to uh, pluck it and get it wet and let it sit. God, He does it all. So we try. We have problems when we try to do it on our own. So today, each of you, you have a lot of problems upon you a lot of times. Events of Exodus, starting from the Red Sea, all these problems during, to these words we say Amen, to that word we say Amen, those who have done that, no matter what problem it is, God, they, they, when they find resolution before God, they're the ones. They're the ones that go to heaven. They're the ones that receive blessings today. God wants us to be that person. That's why He gathered that you're here. You'll all do well. You'll all do well. You'll all do well. God is such a wonderful God. 
But we have a problem. We should realize, oh, God wants to give us blessings to rule over things of this world. Being a, a incredible servants of power of the Lord. That's why He gave us problems. Then we start with grumbling, complaint, and end with that. Even though you start with grumbling, complaint. In verse 12 here, it says grumbling, complaint. In verse 14, verse 15, we hear the voice of God. So, even though we started with grumbling and complaint, we can, we can hear the voice of God. We change our faith. You say, Amen. Even though you came today with grumbling, when you go back with thanksgiving, go, go with thanksgiving, then you'll be healed. Everything will work out. This incredible blessings, I hope you receive it. Amidst God's words, you know, there's so many things that I had realization in the light of Gaila. There's so many hundreds of thousands that came out of the land of Canaan. They all ended up dying in the wilderness. The people that go into Canaan, there's only the people who have not been stained. And those those who say Amen to the Word of God, regardless, Joshua and Caleb who obeyed, that's what they end up going to the land of Canaan. That each of you today will be Joshua and Caleb, that will just be one who are obedient to you. That it will all work out for us, for everybody it will work out. T today, God makes us have the exodus. Why is it that like we're in a sandwich and like almost all people die? Korea, we're, we're a country that received the glory of God. We have received the mystery of Christ. So then, be a person that watches out for them, whether you grumble or complain. Exodus 14, 22, those who grumble and complain. So, is this not the word that we spoke to you in Egypt saying, leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Amen. So, if you listen to this level, so which president, they say, oh, which president, at which present the era, that era was good. That we talk about some things in the past where the era of that president was good, we, and they grumble and complain about the current situation. There's so many people who do that now. However, you and I, as God says, yes, yeah, we grumble and complain. Moses heard this, saw this, and then he knew that. And this, he's, he's, he just stood before the, God, He does it, and He just has to watch. Because it's all supported to each of you. The fact that you have a problem, each one of them, you're not able to resolve it with a little bit of. The issue of salvation, it won't work if it's so that He gave us problems so that we can go to heaven through that problem. It doesn't end us with us resolving the problem after we can help it. Raise, Resolve the problem, be thankful, be, and go to the land that you're content with and rule over it and have dominion over it. Then you'll, you'll be a servant of power and help save so many to receive this blessing. That's why you came. To receive this blessing, that's why you came. You came to resolve your issues. That's why you came here. So this is an incredible promise. People talk about different cancer patients. Not that we should say it, but just listens to us, no matter what of the Word of God, we say, Amen, Amen. So, you just stand still and just do that. Joshua and Caleb, he said, Amen to this, Amen to that. That's how he went to the land of Canaan and received all the blessings. And he's the one that helped save so many spirits. Lived as a proper person. Like Joshua and Caleb. You, want, you should receive that blessings. I mean, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. It's a blessing. The problem is it's a blessing. It's not a problem. God wants us to receive the bless blessings. So here today, verse 12, is grumbling and complaint. So even amidst that, Moses, he didn't. Then you and I, even up until now, we have grumbling and complaint that's coming forth. If we become Moses in Christ as a new person, than me, but I'm different than the person that complained just now. So even though I have, in the past, cancer, but even though you came with grumbling complaint this moment, not only um, 
that we can be the Moses, that we can sit still and uh, be still and watch, and we can confidently say that you and I will become that. This hour I have faith that it will work out. This hour it will work. For everybody it will work. For everybody it will work. Regardless of how they came, but they, they could have been sick, they came with problems, they came grumbling, complaining, regardless of that. So say to the person next to us, do not worry, do not be anxious, do not have worries, do not have worries, do not have worries. You're going to stand still, be still and watch, so no need. To, to the elders and deacons, you should tell them, don't have worries between husband and wife. I have to cut it all down. Yeah. Even though it came like this, God will change the to Moses. Children, God is so surprising. After he says to be still and watch, verse 15, 16 through 17, when you read that, it shows you what God wants to do. So that he, that's why He's giving us this great blessings. People, the people are grumbling, complaining. In verse 15, they can hear, but not to others, to those who grumble and complain. They don't, they can't hear that voice. Those who, when you, those who grumble and complain, and they have uh, medals. So up until now. Things may have been completely over, I'm bankrupt and all sorts of problems, but today if we become like Moses coming into Christ, then all of those have nothing to do with us. We hear the voice of God that's different from that. In verse 15, let's read verse 15. And the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the sons of Israel to go forward. Amen. Now, see here. Each of you, when you, as you would see it, even though you would have come as grumbling Israelites, if you're changed into Moses, then God is saying, Moses, why are you doing that? Your people, go in front. I would change the water, or turn on the water, it's if you're abundance of water in front of you. That's... So, it's better, easier for me, those who came from Honam further south, they came elderly ladies, they thought, oh, they're using dialect, using uh, southern, uh, foolish people have also a source of excuses. You know, somebody imitated that, I, I, I didn't, wasn't intelligent enough to imitate that. So then, they say, okay, okie dokie. You know, I can understand the okay, but, you know, the ranke is kind of like okie dokie. Or in the United States, Koreans are the ones that give all the, uh, taking out all the belly buttons from laughter. You know, to the house that is laughing and smiling, blessings come. People don't realize this. The fact that they'll receive more blessings. Why is the world like this? So it's the, excuse me. So come, come or on? Am I wrong? But that's better than Ranke, uh, the uh, the southern idiom. Water is waiting. Moses hears the voice of God, and he does that exactly. That's. You know, they, they can't, they'll be out of their own mind, regulars. This is obedience. This. We try to do it on our own, it's hard to, to make it happen. But it's a gift from God. John 3, 36. Ephesians 2, 8, it's a gift from God. The Holy Spirit is a gift from God as well. We receive it as a gift. Because there's something we've received. You know, automatically, without me knowing, it goes. I share with others. Talk about past. You said we were laughing at one point with joy. 
and the young Pyong Do where Young Pyong Do and Jeju way south, if you ask them to go back there, they couldn't say anything if we was unsuccessful. They went to Young Pyong Do, that's one thing. But if you go to 100 miles south to Jeju and if there's no fish, they, they would have come back and really destroyed it. Then I said, go south of Jeju. Would people go or not? No, they have all graduate, uh, graduate level people there. Excuse me, not. People, yet they don't go. Go. Each of you, Moses, as he could do it, you, when you become Moses, that today when you go to Christ, we all become changed to be Moses, then God will come and give us conviction. And days you can go and you can do it still confidently. When that conviction comes today, here, each of you, that you will be changed, that you can be changed. You will be changed. You will have to receive it all. You will have to all receive it. For everybody, it will work out. For everybody, it will work. It will just work out. This is so surprising, incredible, and incredible. This is incredible. Just going back to Seoul, if you go uh, for, for no reason and uh, no result, then you might be slapped. But but they would they would go on a boat if they came back not ca having caught anything they they would have been so upset but that conviction would come today let's receive that blessings today here today Moses go forward it says there's water there it says go forward and then after that he teaches he instructs them it would have been so something so grandiose but you know, the, the cane that you have, that when you're old, you use, uh, put that forward. Then uh, I'll stretch it. That he asked him to do, Moses, to do something that doesn't even make sense theoretically. Moses, he's not out of his mind, but God, strange, it may say, but this is what's normal. This is where you obey. Verse 16. Yeah. As for you, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, and the sons of Israel shall go through the midst of the sea on dry land. When each of you, when you hear this, when you stretch out your king, uh, your hand with the king, that you, you're, even if you heard it, then you'll go on dry land, the sea will part. But to obey that, but surprisingly, you have years that you can hear this. Obedience will come forth. So each of you, normal when you're when you're sleeping, a normal person, they stand up right away. They stand up right and go somewhere. You, they go out saying they heard something. The family is holding them back, saying, "Hey, you're hearing the words of demons. It's uh, something that happens." So some special events. They're normal, and yet they're doing um, doing something s s s nonsensical. They're hearing something. When you're at that point where you can hear things like that, you, obedience will come forth. I experienced this. When you've heard something to you, you'll have the strength to obey it. To do, even, even if you're in the snare of the devil, you follow that. But some pastor is... He says, why is your hands all cut up? You know, uh, he ran into the train, the church pastor. You go to the train. You know, your train is all metal. He went on to a moving train. Why did he run into it? So it came into his heart to do that. So he did that, he said. In his heart, he wanted to run into the train. So he, he fainted and... Uh, he thought he died, but later in the hospital, he got operated on, he lived. The, but Almighty God, if we are in the snare of Almighty God, not us, but obedience will come forth, and miracles will happen. It will happen exactly. Today, that we'll hear the voice, that you and I will hear the voice of the Lord, that you'll each of you will hear the voice of the Lord. This will be so incredible, so incredible. 
so surprising. So the Ulsan whaling fish event, not three, not three days, but three weeks. The, the whole world was, was in uh, bankruptcy around whaling ships, but for, he didn't want to go for three weeks to go and buy that whaling fish uh, boat. Said, Pastor, why, he, why is he making me do something that's going to make me fall into ruins? He didn't go in the beginning. After three weeks, he says, if you quickly, he didn't go for three weeks. He says, if you don't go, then drag, take him there, lead him. So I so, uh, called him to his office and I said, okay, let's go together. Then he says, I'll go. And then he went and so as it was reported in the newspaper, he went and bought the fish when everybody was in demise or when the whaling fish uh, boats were in demise. This is beyond imagination. It's the the Red Sea. Is that some sort of a toy that you take, lift the staff and the Red Sea parted, but he did it. And what miracles happened when he obeyed. The strength to obey. Let's let's all let this be a time where we, we all receive that. That it will happen exactly according to it. God will do his miracles. This is so surprising and incredible. <coughs> let's read verse 17. As for me, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them, and I will be honored through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. Amen. Now, so you are the left hand, this side, they have, ten, oh, you are barehanded, and the other side has all sorts of weapons. But through this, God wants to receive the glory. That's why this is happening for you. So after you pass the Red Sea, most people will be so surprised they can't go into the sea. Oh, there are other, most people can't follow them, and they'll see that miracle. It's if I just leave them, the horsemen will not will not follow you, but I'll make their heart hardened and wicked, and they'll follow after you. When God does it, God will, the enemies on all that, God will change their hearts. They would see this miracle, and they wouldn't normally be scared not to, and won't go into the, the sea. But, when these things happen, you realize problems will turn into answer. You'll experience this. We all have to receive these blessings. This is God doing His miracles. I hope that you all receive this blessing. We all have to receive this blessing. We all have to receive this power. Here, today, this is an incredible promise. The result of that, like earlier, um, this hour, God wants to receive the glory, to receive the glory. For God to receive the glory, what must you and I do? Like Moses, we have to hear. We have to hear something. We have to hear the voice of the Lord for us to have strict obedience. So today, Joshua and Galen, every time Moses spoke, they said, Amen, Amen, they obeyed. So what, who are those people? The, the land, the blessed land of Canaan. Uh, as we would say, even going to heaven, they end up receiving it all. Not only did they just receive it, they, they received it as leaders and went into the land of Canaan and ruled over the and ruled over the land of Canaan. I have faith in that. You you're, you're, you have a problem to receive that blessings. You have a problem face the, the problems that you're faced now, so that you can receive that blessings. You, no matter what problem it is, you're you're receiving incredible things in your family between husband and wife. You say you're not educated because of that. No. When we obey the word of the Lord, even the incredible, well-educated people, though, regardless of that, don't talk about that. I'm well-educated, you may say. My spouse, you're not, you're ignorant. You may say you're not educated. No. God will make you do well, make you know everything. John 14, 26. So then what we have to do, Moses, it will have to work for him this hour. We have to know how to listen to the voice, uh, word of God. So Moses, who heard the, vo the word of God, he did something crazy and obeyed. You People will experience this. So now, each of you, now, I'm so full of my own theories. No, my, my own thoughts, no, so too deep into it. No, you just hear the voice of the Lord, of our Father. Even somebody who is in the snare of the devil, they will... They will listen. When I went to a mental, a mental hospital, somebody broke his, I saw a person with a broken leg. I said, why did this happen? Somebody said, came to me and said, go up this, 
they, they said, go up to the, uh, to the tree. So he did. They said to jump. So I jumped. And I, this is what happened. I broke. I, they, you listen. When you listen to demons, however, then that's what happens. Sorry to say. You say you're not listening to words of demons. If you don't have faith, you listen to the words of demons. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. You end up listening to demons. So when somebody who's normal, you don't know what's going to happen to them. Even somebody looks normal now. Our father was healthy. Why did he have that kind of accident? My family member was so healthy. Why did that happen? When they listen to words of demons without them knowing, this is what happens. To words of demons, you obey. You end up becoming handicapped and crazy and die, uh, or even die. But but Almighty God, if you heard this, would you obey? No, don't think of doubting. When you obey, uh, you doubt that. Without you even knowing, you end up obeying, doing. No, by your own thoughts, when you go a few days, if it's inconsistent with your theories, you might you might quit. But what God commands you, try. It will work. It does. Moses, what kind of person? 40 years, he was in the kingdom. And he learned in the palace. And in the 40 years, he lived, learned in the wilderness. He lived 80 years. So he's... The you, we don't have more education, learning, we're not more learned than that or less. So, if it worked for Moses, it'll work for each one of us as well. Let's all receive that blessings. You'll have healing of sickness and disease. You'll receive power and strength and knowledge and blessings. But for everybody, it, all, it will all work out. I hope you receive this blessings. This is so surprising and incredible. So, Matthew 13. 14, 15. Matthew 13, 14, 15. Matthew 13, verse 14 and 15. Let's read those two verses. This is incredible. If you haven't experienced it, that's why. But do not worry. Please, I ask of you, cleanse your heart and just hear only the voice of our Father God. Let's all just become like Moses. Then, what we have not even heard of, imagine he will ask me to do, ask, order us to do, command us to do. If we don't become like Moses, is it not what God commanded at that time? You say, oh, Pastor Park, he went, he had the young Pyongdo uh, Corvina, um, went down to Jeju Island. What if he, what if he was wrong? No, what God commands us, hundred percent, it works. He gives us the blessings in front of us. This is so incredible. So, let's live life experiencing this. What happens when you live life experiencing this? You go to heaven. Then you rule over things of the world. You receive all answers to your prayers when you live like that. Moses, when he heard answers to prayers, not only he, he, did he receive answers to prayers for all the other people of Israel as well. Let's all become like this and receive answers to our prayers and receive it all. This incredible promises, this incredible miracles in the small sanctuary that we would all receive it. This is so incredible for everybody that we would all receive it. God, he's such a wonderful God. So that's why me, when God asks me to do something, I just obe ob obey. I was on the first floor coming up. Pastor, pastor's wife called me. So there was a, we were in front of everybody together. How loudly did I answer? And I said, pastor's wife, where are you? And she didn't, you know, she wasn't around anywhere. I could just hear her voice, though. And then later... I hear afterwards the voice saying, repent more. She, Genesis chapter 2. Pastor's wife is the helper. She's a helper for me to do help in what? To repent more, for me to repent more. We have to hear the voice of God through her, through our helper. So you and I, if we heard his voice, if I did that, it would be so easy. Demons continues to talk to us. But we just have to change it to, to God talking talking to us. Verse 14, 15, let's read those two verses. In their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled, which says, you will keep on hearing, but will not understand. You will keep on seeing, but will not perceive. For the heart of this troubled people has become dull. For their ears, with their ears, they scarcely hear, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they would see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their heart and return. Now see here, 
you and I. Con God continues to call us and want to give us blessings. He says, go east and receive blessings, go west and receive, receive blessings. He tells us these, but we don't hear it. We can't hear it. Why? Because our heart is hardened. So we have sins unrepented in our hearts. So God is continuing to talk to us. And so hearing His voice of Him talking to us inside of us, when our heart is sin and hardened, what attaches itself? The demon attaches itself. So this demon, our theories and, and our own thoughts, it's, we're full of that. And the, the demons have own thoughts and the, theories and stubbornness. doesn't follow. It's wicked and evil, evil that doesn't follow. So they don't want to hear the word of God. It makes us not hear the voice of God. It trembles against it, no, against God. And when we have a hardened heart and when we cleanse it through the blood of Christ, not me, but He comes inside of us, then we can hear the voice of God properly and makes us obey the voice of God. The miracles will happen today. This hour, that miracle will happen right away. That Let's all receive that power. Let's receive all that ability and power. Let's, for everybody, it can work out. In the small sanctuary, it can work out for everybody as well. Something's not working out for you. So that's by our own thoughts and theories. It's wicked and evil. When our heart is hardened and seared, makes us not hear the voice of God. If that's the case, then when you're doing something and you don't want to do it, a fearful heart comes upon you. Doubt comes upon you. If I do it, I'll fall into ruins. If I do that, I'll fall into ruins. You have a fearful heart. When you do it, then you'll fall into ruins. But how, that we can, so that we can hear the voice of God. How? Do, what kind of great person can we be in our heart? You know, the hardened heart, when we cleanse it all out through the Word of God, we can hear Him. That you, each of you try this, the voice of God today. It doesn't say it comes in a certain way, but rather the Bible verse jumps out, even though it's a Bible verse I didn't know. Not only that, it jumps out. Not not only Bible verses we don't know, but what I experienced, the Bible verse, you know, jumps out and it's written in midair. If I touch it, it's not there, but I can see the words, the words. When I experienced that for the first time, I said, strange, you know, I try to touch it, you can't catch it. But yet the Bible verse is there written in midair. So who's the one that can't uh, read what's written? You can read it all. You hear it like this. If you don't know, if it's not like that, it's like frogs. Other people hear hear the frogs, but but what I hear is instead of frogs, it says Paul, Paul, Paul. So Paul, is that Apostle Paul? God, yes, yes. So why is the frog saying Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul? For other people, they don't hear it, but I hear it. But in Acts chapter 9, Apostle Paul, he experienced that. Other people can't hear it, but I can. It says, Saul, Saul, you hear incredible things. When? when? When we continue to cleanse our hardened heart, when we repent. So that's why each of you, in your heart, when you're repenting, not once, twice, but when you continue, without you even knowing, you become a change to a person that can hear the voice of God. The moment you are changed as well, you obey the, His voice. Not, even to to words of demons, people get up and obey that. But to the voice of God, you end up obeying and behind it. Incredible miracles happen, but you all receive these blessings. For everybody, all will work. If we just cleanse our hearts, it will all work. I hope you all receive these blessings. Surely, you just have to cleanse our hearts. So that when you hear the voice, to, like voice, uh, Moses heard the voice of God. Those who grumble and complain, they have not repented. If they repent, and that they can hear the voice of God, just like Moses, and you stretch out your staff, the miracles happen this evening. When you repent, I have faith that you'll hear the voice of God. This hour, surely, that you will surely hear the voice of God, the voice, voice of the Lord. Let's all receive that blessings, and the miracles will happen. Let's all, the miracles will happen. I hope that you will do exactly according to that. Please. Do not doubt if it's cancer. Some people say, oh, it can't be healed. So it's here for me. Somebody who's wrecked them is rotten away. When you continue to cleanse it, say, Pastor, they continue to, Pastor, it didn't work. It didn't, they, they went to all sorts of hospitals. They couldn't get it healed. You know, if you don't have operation, you may die. But they came to uh, receive prayer from me. 
he cleansed with uh, tap water every day. It was Pastor Park said, I heard the voice of God. I said, cleanse with uh, water tap, clean with water tap water. It says, I do it every day, but that's you, you're cleaning it, not me. No, but what, when you clean, after I hear the voice of God, when you obey that, I have faith that miracles will happen and healing will happen. And that, uh, that healing and miracle will happen exactly according to it, even though he was cleaning with tap water all this time. But when he cleans it after God told you know, the, uh, Pastor Park, then he can. God wants us to go to heaven, to have faith, to go to the land of Canaan, to rule over things of the world. If you go in that path, hear the voice of God in the trouble that you're in, repent your heart, and so they can hear the voice of God. When you hear the voice of God, miracles will happen. When that miracles happen, then you can rule over that thing. Then next time, when you're continuing that, you can go into the land of Canaan. You're, you can live life confidently. You have the confidence to be able to rule over things. So, Pastor Park, I don't know anything, but I can live confidently. That's why when there's a problem that, I come, uh, that I'm faced with, I said, Lord, you said to cry out to you. After we receive the Holy Spirit, we say, Father God, you said, okay, I got it. After we repent like that, and we hear the voice of God, when we just obey that, the miracles will happen. Miracles happen. This is how God says, well, uh, even though I don't know anything, I didn't do anything, I said, Father, he says, you know, just, I said, don't cry to me and reach, uh, reach out your staff. Then miracles you know, I some people research for many years, and yet I go. And then calculations come to my mind, and uh, I say things, and then people next to them get so surprised, experience that. What God does is so surprising and incredible. What is that? Being a witness of ruling over things of the world, of uh, having dominion over things. Problem means that you can receive the blessings. It's really God telling us to receive the blessings and be owner of it. For everybody will work. Let's all receive this. And let's live life ruling over things of the world, this small sanctuary as well. I hope that you receive these blessings. Let's cry to the Lord three times and pray. That hardness in our heart, let's cleanse that. And hear the voice of God, that our problems will turn into answers today, that miracles will happen today. But it's not what you work that you don't want to do. What you do, within what you do, be the owner, be somebody who rules over it, have dominion over it, the headache, problem that you have, it's not a problem, it's a blessing. The heart, and heart that you have, cleanse it. Because of that, I'm going to give up on life. You may say, I'm going to commit suicide. You may say, now I've got to quit the business and run away. No, that's not the case. Within that is the answer. The heart and heart, when you cleanse your heart and heart, you'll hear the voice of God. You'll hear the voice of God. He wants us to have dominion and rule over things of the world. I, that you'll be a witness of this. You'll be a servant of power that will go into the land of Canaan, that you'll receive the blessings of a king. Let's all cry to the, to the Lord three times. Lord, 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 Father, Father God, this incredible blessings. Let's help us to receive it through this blessings. Let's all let's all receive this blessing today. Let's all receive this blessings that we can rule over the things of the world. We'll be servants of power that will have dominion of the things of the world that help us to hear the voice of, of our Father and help us to obey it exactly according to His voice. Lord, let's all receive this. Those who are sick, let's. Hear the voice of God and have healing. Those with problems, let's hear the voice of God and resolve them. find resolution to our problems. Father, Father God, thank you. Father God, thank you. Father God, thank you. Father God, thank you. It's not a problem. It's help us to hear your voice that you want us to receive blessings that help us to hear your voice that you want us to do even better, better. I'm not the problem. My spouse is not the problem. My children is not the problem. My business is not the problem. It's been seeing doing better, do better, do better. These are words to us. With a heart of prayer, let's continue to have that and hold that. So when we repent, how hardened of a heart we have, as much as we repent in the beginning, say, oh, you jerk, I, I, have to, I should do it this way. You hear the voice of God, uh, excuse me, you hear a voice inside you like that, that's the voice of Satan. When you repent more, no, we, others, you know, 
we have to do it like that, but God will return, but uh, God will do that, but I have to forgive, and I have to receive forgiveness before God and hear the voice of God. When we repent that way more and humble ourselves even more, when we feel hurt, and how, how can they do that to me? So those kind of thoughts change into thanksgiving, when it changes into thanksgiving. So God has done all of this for me to do better, so that when I properly do four step repentance, the, the last part of four step repentance is thanksgiving. So after thanksgiving, the voice of God that we hear is the, must be the voice of, of God, our Father. When we're repenting in this way, then truly you'll hear the voice of our God. So after thanksgiving, behind the, after thanksgiving, we hear the voice of God. When you do such and such, then you and your family has become better. So are you how can, are you not thankful? That kind of conviction comes to you. So then. It comes to you like that, and you hear the voice of God. So therefore, you should try this. You should do such and such when you hear that voice. When you and so, if I do that, what kind of result will come to that person? There's a benefit to them, and a benefit to me as well. And glory to God, and miracles will happen. Then you'll end up knowing that exactly. So when you know it, when you're able to know it like that, when you repent more, one more time, you say, Father. I have faith that your voice is true and have conviction. You ask strength and repentance for you to obey. Then conviction, that conviction to that voice comes. And after you finish prayer, you can change your actions to be changed to, to, to do that. So it's not the listeners who are righteous, but the doers who are righteous. This do, doing is obedience. So the miracles of obedience follows. So I hope you pray to this point. The hurt that you have, let's confess that. Your problem, you confess that. And the hurt will come out. If they didn't do that, this won't happen. This wouldn't have happened to me. You have that grumbling. That's in verse 12. Becoming like Moses is not when you're grumbling, complaining, and blaming others, but rather when we stand still, when we are still, God, He will not let me lose out and shortchange me. Miracles will happen. Then when you, you go to the side of being Moses, that's when you'll hear the voice to reach out your staff. When you obey that, then you'll be made alive. Your Israel will be made alive. Your family will be made alive. Your family will be made alive. Your career will be made alive. Incredible miracles will happen. I believe in that. You pray to that point. Well, after that prayer happens, and when that conviction, when conviction comes, when you give thanksgiving to God, and after that, even after the worship service is over, your actions will be changed. Why is it that God asked me to do something so difficult? Why is my why is there such a big problem in front of me? Up until now, you may say because my parents, because of such and such, your grumbling complaint will be gone, and you say, "Aha!" So if I have rule over and dominion over this, and I rule over this, then God wants me to have be a child of God to rule over this and when we give thanksgiving and after that let me be diligent in resolving that and and let me be diligent obeying the lord then after when we obey the miracles will happen we give glory to god and, and we give benefit to our household and everybody in our soul and all that miracles will happen after you pray what voice comes out right away it's not uh, the voice of god if you hear that voice then it could be you, you may want to go back and revenge when you pray. You know, when you repent, it says, oh, go say, tell them something. Then you think, oh, say, say, speak out to them. Don't follow that. Then you, you can rebuke them and say bad things and say, why did you do that? No, don't obey that. But repent even more than when you continue to... The fact that Satan is ruling over your heart when we cleanse through the blood of Christ because it's because of sins, cleanse that sin. This hour, I hope that you receive all the miracles that you'll all receive. This answers to prayers. This hour, I have faith that God will give it to you. You just have to follow that exactly. Don't Exodus 14 12. Don't grumble and complain. We have to be changed for me to be changed to Moses, to be like Moses. After we're changed like Moses, no matter what happens, nothing will, won't be changed, uh, lose, lose out on anything. That when we have that conviction, we change to that, we can hear the voice of our Father God. So th that voice it doesn't harm anybody and give benefit to everybody. We, and the miracles of giving glory to God has to happen. When this happens, when you have worldly acknowledge, you know, the people of Israel, we should should be destroyed. No, when we have none, there's the judgment, the, the just, the just judgment of God. You know, we have to part the Red Sea for me to be made alive, for us to survive. So, after 
through the parting of the Red Sea when they're all alive, then what happens after that? What God does, we cannot block it. When we just obey exactly according to that, that's when you'll have healing of your sickness and disease. Your problems will be resolved. No matter what the difficulty it is, you can rule over that. Let it be a time where we can resolve or receive that blessings. Father, now we have realization through His words. Now, not that we're righteous who are listeners, listeners of but we would obey your words this hour. Help us to obey your voice of our Father. Help us receive answers to prayers. Help us to find resolution to our problems. Help us to be healed. Uh, let there be miracles. Let there be in, the, in, the, in all things, whoever it is, that it will all work out. Things will work out for the best. best. In the name of Jesus and thankfulness and blessings, I pray. Amen. Now, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, God's infinite love, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, this hour, help us cleanse the hardened heart that we have and hear the voice of our Father. And like Moses, we want to obey you. And let the, we want to receive answers to prayers of obedience, answers to prayers that come from obedience. And all the people who have the heart, have this heart, that you'll be with them now and forever. I pray in the name of the Lord. Amen.